when you involuntarily have one sense respond to another sense. So some people can like um, taste words. There's, I've read somebody who can like tube, underground tube stops in London. They can like have a different flavor. Oh yeah, like West Ham is like bacon and eggs. There's a definitely ham theme there. <laughs> or something more creative. But yeah, so when I play music, I can see the shapes and sounds. And it gets really intense when I'm quite like tired. <laughs> Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to the next episode of Chats. I think this is episode 13. Okay. I don't want to I don't want to mess that up. Um, so we've got another female guest. Hey. So actually our third female guest. Am I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dancer. Girls uh, seem to be scared of me. I think I might be intimidating. Mate, you might be scared of me. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone, welcome Leah Sachs or Leah Thomas. Let's go with Leah Sachs. My Leah middle Sachs. name's a secret, mate. Nobody <laughs> knows. All right, sorry. I'll just blow in a cover. That's fine. But, that's fine. So the way we introduce the guests now yeah. is I ask you to introduce yourself. How we, would you introduce yourself to me and somebody brand new? Okay. So you're there right now? Yeah. Well, so which camera are you using? Um, so we can look at that one if you want, or we can look at that okay. one. Okay. Okay. Right. My name. Should I go for it? Yeah, going go for, for it, guys. Okay. Hi, my name is Leah Sachs. I'm a musician. I'm a Christian. I'm very bubbly and very smiley and very energetic and highly optimistic. That's a very good way to introduce yourself. Thanks. And I can back that up because we've just been at a shoot for like, <laughs> was it two, two and a half yeah, hours or something like that? Yeah. So <laughs> she should be absolutely knackered after that. But then I broke to into filming a podcast. I was like, do you want to film a podcast quickly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> Show me where I need to be. <laughs> I know, exactly. So I prepped you two minutes before we started. Yes. So you need to tell us yeah. three facts about yourself. Okay, three facts about myself. My best friend is my sister who is six foot two. My little sister. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, when I was born, I was on the front page of the Times. Yes, <laughs> good face. And uh, I see sound. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's not just hearing. I like seeing like colours and pictures and shapes. Yeah, that's crazy. I reckon we start with the first one then. So okay. your sister, yeah, is six foot two. Yeah, my little sister. She's been bigger than me since I was like nine. She's two years younger than me. She's an amazing human being. Mm. As a result, everyone thinks that I'm the little sister. But I fit exactly under her chin. So you always you always know like a bloke's like, yeah, I'm six foot two. I'm like, I have a definitive measuring <laughs> system. Give me a hug, and if you fit exactly on my head then you are six foot two plus but if you're not you're lying because a lot of men lie about their height yeah i know i think to be fair i'm not sure how tall i am i think i'm like five foot ten five foot eleven i'm definitely not six foot but it's fair, it's fair. yeah <laughs> so you said she was six foot no not six foot i mean two, she still she is nine. six foot two <laughs> <laughs> so when did it overtake at nine years old yeah i think it was nine uh actually my mother is sitting over there as well yeah i think when it was like was was she nine was i nine yeah, about that. Yeah, she's she's, she's she's nodding to yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> and her mum's an absolute legend. <laughs> we <laughs> yeah. talk about she's been listening to my shit crack. I bought my mum. I was like, do you want to come to my photo shoot? She's like, yes, darling. I will bring <laughs> chocolate biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> but no. So the second fact. Yes. So what was the second fact again? Okay, this is quite a deep one. Okay, yeah. are you ready? Mm -hmm. So I was on the front page of the Times when I was born. Because mm. I was born a long time ago. Even though my face, obviously. I know. I was surprised how old. She, we're not going to reveal a lady's well, this, age well, on the podcast. Well, the, well, this, I was born, let's say, in the 80s. <laughs> that fine decade. Yeah. Style, hairspray, and eyeshadow. So my dad mm -hmm. survived um, a bombing that was, yes, see, look at that face. This was unexpected content, yeah. wasn't it? So, um, yeah, in 1984. And so, because they were like five people were killed really sadly, but they wanted like a happy, like some like positive news out of a really like sad time. Yeah. So when I was born six days, five, six days later, they put me on the front page of the Times going, this is Harvey Thomas. He, he survived the Brighton bomb yeah. and here he is with my mom looking fabulous, <laughs> like with a newborn baby. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was on the front page when oh, I was born. Oh. Yeah. That's very interesting. So I didn't expect that when you said you're on the Times. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> um, Yes, it's just quite a deep story, but mm. also quite fun. So like, yes, yeah. evidence I was born. Everyone in the whole world knew. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good fact to tell, though, especially on a podcast. And the final one. Yeah. So you told me this before as well. Yeah. Didn't you? yeah, yeah, yeah. Synesthetic. And I couldn't relate to it at all. No, <laughs> well, sorry. it's the weird thing. So it's when you involuntarily mm -hmm. have one sense respond to another sense. So some people can like um, taste words. There's, I've read somebody who can like tube underground tube stops in London. They can like have a different flavor. Oh yeah, like West Ham is like bacon and eggs. 
There's a definitely a ham theme there. <laughs> or something more creative. But yeah, so when I play music, I can see the shapes and sounds. And it gets really intense when I'm quite like tired. So I remember being like someone once, they wanted to change the key. And I was like, I cannot cope with changing the key. You've been in a red key and now you're putting in a blue key and I can't play. Or like I'm talking to a sound engineer and they're talking about my saxophone sound. I'm like, it's, it's wrong. It should be a circle. It's a circle with the line. And what I should have said is, please take out the low mids. But so I actually see shapes, sounds and colors when I play music. That's so cool. Yeah. Wait, when did you discover that? Uh, when I was quite little, because I remember going to my sister, what's your favorite note on the piano? And it was the F sharp, F sharp low middle C. I'm sure you can relate because you're a clarinet player, right, mate? Uh, yeah, I played the clarinet <laughs> back in the day. Please tell us about your clarinet skills. Um, yeah, there's pretty non-existent to be Did fair. Did you get any grades, my love? I don't, maybe, I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> it's how long ago. I'm old now. Anyway, so I remember going and I remember it being like a, a really like vivid, like emerald green, this F sharp. Yeah. And I think I remember asking her what color it was and she was like, what are you on about? And it was only when I was in my 20s that I realised that not everybody... That late? Well, because if you... There must be something about you that you... You always realise that you must process something one way and somebody goes, mate, no. Yeah. It was one of those things that I didn't realise that all of humanity didn't. Yeah. Obviously. It's, it's... Until you late 20s twen- or mid-20s? Mid, mid-20s, so. yeah. And then I was like, oh, do you not do that? No. No. Oh, that's crazy. It is crazy. Because it means that's how I relate to music and how I create and how I process. And so if I close, I, feel like I frequently play with my eyes closed, number one for concentrating, but also it lets me see the shapes. Mm. And, the colors. and would you say that's common with other musicians? No. Have you met anyone else? Yes. Uh, but other, um, other people will have it like very, very much stronger than I do. So they're like, you know, the key of A flat is always rose gold. Whereas I'm like, oh no, when I'm in this case, it's kind of like these colors. Yeah. Um, and if you'd like a history lesson, there are certain composers throughout history. In fact, no, there are some great people right now mm-hmm. who write music according to colour. Okay. Yeah. Who are, who are they? Do you want to name drop? Well, well, yeah, right. well unless you'd like to like talk about the French <laughs> messiah You're who the was guest. around. You can talk and... whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is, I read an article about this great woman who I can't I can't remember any other names right yeah. now, but it's a thing. Put you on the spot here. <laughs> yeah. Go 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 home and Google. <laughs> Google right now. Pause this. Yeah. Google. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So what, right. what was it called again? Synesi- synesthesia. Yeah. So you're synesthetic. It's when mm-hmm. in one sense Captain. And would you say that's something you can, would you be able to develop over time or is it just? It's involuntary. Okay. So like your brain just goes. Mm-hmm. And it's often you can like nurture to push it more and it's I just like so. kind of happens. It's just a thing. Yeah. That's so interesting. It is fun. Yeah. It, it's also lovely like when something like you hear a particular be- piece of music and like just to your mind, all these colors and shapes bring up, I'm like, oh, I want to go back, I want to rewind the music and just listen to that thing. And I find that certain artists have certain color. Like whenever I listen to Dua Lipa, it's always like a deep, like navy color. Yes. Or if I listen to like, um, like some Jill Scott, it ends up being kind of like a, like a passably coral. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just trying to like imagine and put myself in your situation. So. Yeah. Say if you listen to the same song, like twice in a row, would it be the same colours or would it be slightly Generally, different? yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's mad. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Don't worry. My love, it is totally mad. <laughs> I love to be in your head to listen to music sometimes. My, my head. <laughs> Who knows? It might be So, right. What were, you, what were you like growing up then? Like this. Mm-hmm. Like very well behaved. Yeah. Highly enthusiastic. Mm-hmm. Hard worker. I really liked school. Did you? I was that kid. Yeah. But what what side of school was it? The academics or was it extra, extra activities? Well, my extracurricular activities was the choir, the recorder club, the jazz ensemble. So they were all the music ones. I I still like learning. Yeah. I like history. I just like knowledge, and yeah. it's really cool. Like you meet somebody new and you learn what they do, and you find out about their microphones and their setup and how. <laughs> like learning things are really cool. Yeah. Um, and I was as a person quite. I don't know if easygoing is the right word. I get on with everyone. So yeah. like, I, I was thankfully, praise the Lord, like not in a position to get bullied for the fact that I was clearly one of the geekiest kids. <laughs> in the... Oh, Leah. Yeah. She's at music club and then she just did all her homework on time and has never handed attention. Yeah. Ah! That's what you want. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's me. The word girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, thank you very much. Kiwi girl school, Barnet. Thank I, you. I was going to say jealous, but not jealous you had girl, maybe if it was a head boy, but. <laughs> it was fun. You got to make speeches, which I quite like. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, I was very geeky. Um, got on work super well with my family. Yeah. Basically a really goody two-shoes cliche. And I'm a Christian, so it's like all wrapped up. Perfect, in yeah. 
<laughs> and then I ended up like this, like sequins and saxophones. <laughs> you don't have your shoes on. I know, because I, I, I had these amazing, they're over somewhere. These, yeah, lift them up. Yeah, I had these amazing, so now I'm just like, when I was in, well, you were like when you're in your black trainers, I was like, yeah, hey, I'm going to join you. Like, Heels are pretty, but like hard work. Yeah, I, I, I so, can't relate to that either. But just just backtracking slightly. Sorry, yeah, you um, do that. I was saying, you were saying about learning, you like learning. I think it's it's a really interesting thing because when you finish like school education, yeah. a lot of people stop learning. They'll go into a job and then they won't learn anything or um, have new experiences, that kind of thing. And your brain's just like another muscle, isn't it? Yeah, you, you yeah. need to train it every day, yeah. even if it's like listening to podcasts or audio books and stuff like that and just making You're your brain so think. Right. And, and it, I feel like a lot of people stop as soon as they finish education. And it's also like, it's a real, like it's, you, you learn a position of humility because like, you don't know everything. Yeah. Like on me, you, I, it's what a great person. I've never met like, you know, a person like you tell me about the fact that you can like play this obscure game or like, like, like I don't know, your know, sports or like, um, you know, where they've got a skill. You just, people are so interesting and you yeah. can learn so much from people and you can learn so much. Like I met a DJ friend, friend of mine yesterday. We went out for like brunch in St. Albans. I was like, can we walk around the cathedral, please? <laughs> <laughs> and I, can, I know, bless him. That's not his like go-to. Yeah. And he's like, all right, we found this tour. And this dude was amazing. He was like, and in 1472, it was so great though, because it's a history of culture and it's a history of people. And you like learn that like humans are the same. We just don't change. <laughs> yeah, I know. But that's, that's, that's what I mean. It's just having like new experiences. Isn't it? And What's stuff been like the most that. interesting thing you've learned recently? You put me on the spot. Yeah. Ah! I'm, not the, I'm not the guest here. Um, I don't know. Like maybe just relating stuff to like the work stuff that we were doing. Um, like recently, last yeah, couple yeah, days yeah, yeah. in uh, Watford and the Grove. It's just like like say people. It's very yeah. about new people. So recently, we've been kind of going with new types of businesses. Yeah, um, yeah. Like slightly bigger businesses we've de been dealing yeah. with, and it's just dealing with those kind of people and their mindset compared to other ones and yeah. it's just the way they hold themselves and the way they think and the way they make decisions and does that change anything about the way that you process and the way that you think yeah a lot yeah um and it's just say for example um i know this you're the guest but i'm going on here no, no so way, I, I think i think the way their mindset changes so a lot of businesses would maybe think of marketing as a cost and it yes. costs them x amount but yeah, yeah, say yeah. the larger businesses they think a bit more of an investment so obviously if yeah. people know how businesses work, if you make profit, you have to pay like corporation tax on that. Yeah. But obviously, if you want to grow the business, you want to invest your, that Good. profit in marketing to grow the business even further. So it's just like the mindset of that. Whereas the bigger businesses, the more money they can invest, whereas it doesn't really impact them because they pay themselves a salary. Whereas if you're dealing with like kind of self-employed sole traders, like one man bands kind of thing, that kind of fixed amount of money has a bigger implication on their yeah. life. And yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. Bigger investment is harder work because obviously that's... Um, kind of a bigger proportion of income for them kind of thing so yeah yeah so that's that's one thing that we've kind of learned recently <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks. but yeah <laughs> so, so yeah growing up growing up then yeah um so what, what did you enjoy the most about growing up was it kind of like the music side yeah hands down i love music and I, there's something really special about you sometimes never do as much music as when you're a kid because like you can go to the orchestra practice on a wednesday and the jazz thing and the you know the a choir concert so you can actually be immersed in it and you're still learning and it's okay like not to be perfect and it's lovely because i do i teach music as well so i teach little ones and yeah they can't hear that what they're sounding is like bah, bah, bah. and there's so much joy and bless again my mom and my late dad like uh they would come to like every single concert bless them for doing that um but there was so much joy and there's so much like music is about people and about creativity and about expressing and about community so like a lot of my closest friends are musicians because we have that shared passion but that shared experience of doing something creative together mm -hmm. so yeah i was full on in every sense the music kid which only like got more intense as i did like music at uni <laughs> <laughs> and like yeah properly geeked out on it so by the sounds of it when you were growing up i suppose it's like difficult when you're growing up isn't it for like kids because you maybe think too much about what other people think of you yeah that. would would you have said like you kind of just did what you want you didn't really care about what other people thought I, I genuinely think i'm this and it's just like i think it's just the way my brain is wired i can't take any credit for this this is just the way that god made me like i'm an optimistic and don't care massively what other people think mm -hmm. so as long as i'm like kind and like loving to people around me like it doesn't really matter so like i've got school pictures of me and i remember being like 
the skirts were long and my glasses were massive and the fringe <laughs> was here. And I just remember it being happy and just like, just thinking, actually, I'm not, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing as well as I can, trying to respect people around me, just kind of bumbled on yeah. and turned out, I just kept doing that throughout my life. Mm -hmm. And now here I am. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but school's hard. Um, especially if you're not like everyone else. And I definitely wasn't yeah. like, I like school. <laughs> I was well behaved. <laughs> that is not, not normal. Um, and I, and I knew that at the time, mm -hmm. but I think because I like was harmless, I wasn't a threat to anyone. Like I didn't have, I had a couple of close friends, but I wasn't really in a massive clique with everyone mm -hmm. as well, which, and also just cause you know, born in the eighties, <laughs> grew up in a world pre-social media. That's interesting. It is. So like I like had my mate's landlines memorized. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So there's, it's just a completely different ethos of how you communicate with each other. Mm. Um, and you know, there was one landline in that. <laughs> Make me sound like the old days. This is what happened. <laughs> yeah, I um, but I mean, that is a, I think that is a blessing like for me that I grew yeah, up yeah. before that. A lot of pressure these days. It's a huge amount of pressure and it's overt. And it's sub, you know, covert and like, it's subtle and it's very manipulative. And you just, and it's, it, there's, a, there's such a duality at the moment of like, be who you want to be, bossy positive, don't use a filter, but you can use a filter, but you can do your makeup, but you shouldn't wear makeup. But there is, there is a lot of, so many pressures, you know, I want to be like my friends, but I don't want to be like my friends and I want to express myself, but can I express myself that way? Mm -hmm. I think there's so much information coming at you from every direction. Yeah, like, that's the best way to put it, isn't it? Especially, yeah. I think, especially for young girls as yes. well. Oh my goodness. Totally. Um, like, <laughs> blue mascara was the thing when I was young. <laughs> and she, yeah. And we learned how to do that from like magazines. Yeah. So like that was our source, but when it's bombarded at you and when so much cultural value is put on you by appearance mm -hmm. or even by success, um, you know, I have achieved this, not like I'm kind, I've worked really hard, which is actually a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> like, that's what lasts, isn't it? The friendship and the love and the mm -hmm. honesty and the humility and the serving one another. That's a great thing, but that's really hard. And it's so easy to say, oh, just, you know, just, you know, re restrict your hour on, hours on like socials or like make sure your phone is like away, but that's actually really hard to do. Oh yeah. Really hard. Like it's so me, hard. I put my phone on do not disturb. So I don't get any messages, yeah. but I still find myself checking it like every me, five seconds. Anyway. Me, so much. <laughs> I'm exactly the same way. Hmm. So much. And then also like as a business, like I'm a musician, I'm a sax player, hmm. my shop front is my social media. Yeah. So like, there's a weird for me, there's like, well, this is also work. And I want to portray myself in an honest way, but also in a appropriate way and in a like, um, appropriate way to my job. So it's, it's just, there's so many, there's no, there's no, there's no right. Sometimes there can be no right or wrong. Yeah. And it's just experience. You know, it's it's difficult to say, say for me, yeah. like I earn hundred percent of my income from social media. Yeah. 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 So, so without it, like <laughs> I'd, be, I'd, be the, I'd be on the streets. <laughs> so I, I think, I think like you say, like. I can't remember who I was talking to the other day, but I think we were talking about like the education system, yeah. something like that. And we were saying like when I was at school, yeah. it was just like a memory test, isn't it? But yes. realistically, if you're on an exam or you're not allowed to calculate or something, but when would you ever be in a situation where yes. you would be able to Google something and find That's the answer exactly within five seconds or YouTube it yeah. and find the solution? Or for example, if you're trying to work out a maths problem to just use a calculator on your phone, whereas really... The, the real things that people should be teaching is say, I don't know, like cash flow forecasts or budgeting or how to get a mortgage and, and stuff like that. It's a practical skill. Yeah. Like I don't know. I've got a master's degree in music. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Not once did anyone go, you're going to be a self-employed musician. This is how a tax return works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My lovely parents who also self-employed sent me to their accountants. So I'm like, mm. go and spend half an hour with Christine. Yeah. Like Christine. I'm quite lucky because my dad's a child account. Oh, is he? <laughs> well, did you want to give a shout out to his business name? <laughs> No, he, he works for a company. Anyway. Okay, okay. So, no, 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 of course. <laughs> but then you're so right. Those very practical life skills, mm -hmm. you know. That's what I mean. Like, say, without my dad helping me, I wouldn't have a clue how to do a cash flow box or a proper loss account. I know. <laughs> Even at uni, though, to be fair, when I went to uni, maybe we did it vaguely, but it wasn't like a big emphasis on you need to do this because I feel like, not there's anything wrong with it, but the education system is so like, 
go to school, go to sixth form, go to uni just for bums on seats because obviously the budget dependent on it, isn't it really? It is. And I like, because I'm going to schools and mm -hmm. teach, I feel for teachers because they're sitting there trying to hit targets. Yeah. And then you see these kids who've got like so much going on in their lives, like young people have got so much going on um, and families, I've seen so many like families that are struggling or are broken or young people that are struggling. And that's actually what you want to be serving and loving. Because if you like look after young people and them, what they need is an individual, then they will flourish in other areas. Mm -hmm. But when you've got these educators who are doing, and I've, I've, I have many colleagues who are teachers and they do a sterling job, but yeah. I'm so torn because I'm like, you are hitting these targets, but like, I know as a person who ca probably came into education because you really like your subject and young people. Mm -hmm not being able to fulfill you know what you'd want to do in that sense but it, it's yeah it's and just on that same topic say yeah. for you yeah um i'm just thinking say because obviously when you grow up and you have a job and stuff like yeah. that you specialize probably in one or maybe two things so specialize in saxophone yeah. or whatever but when you're at school you're say given all these subjects to do aren't you that yeah. probably you're not interested in at all and maybe if you found like a passionate few yeah. things to maybe focus on that rather than you go into biology and absolutely hating it we specialize so early as well it, it, mm. which is really the inverse mm. but like we but we get people to narrow down their options very early in this country like by the age mm. of 15 14 15 when you're choosing gcse's already you are dismissing things mm -hmm. and narrowing down as opposed to like broadening well why didn't i want to do more topics which mm. you know for me i was really blessed in that I was always clearly the music kid. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That was what I want. But my best mate, like, was like, I just don't have a passion for these things and I don't know what I want to do. So had she been given more opportunities, she probably would have had time to find a niche. Mm -hmm. But like, I remember mates who like started levels and be like, actually, this is not for me. And then they took the time off or they did like a BTEC or something. And I had so much respect for them because they had the courage to go, I'm not going to conform to what everyone else is doing on the next step. And I'm going to mm -hmm. take that time and go, actually, Mm -hmm. I'm more practical or more creative and yeah. I'm going to take that time and go, this is what I want to do. And like, I don't need to do these other things that everyone else is doing. Yeah. Cause I think it is difficult. Yeah. So when you, when you say 16, yeah. well, well, even younger, so when you're choosing GCSEs, um, to pick stuff, cause really you're not even growing ears. No. And how should you be expected to know what you want to do for the rest yeah. of your life? But I think, I think these days though, it's a lot different to say when my parents were younger. Yeah. Whereas they would maybe like my dad's been an accountant all his life, but I feel like people these days maybe flip between a few jobs these days, don't they? So they kind of, you can be whatever you want to be kind of thing. But also frequently lots of jobs have lots of hats. So yeah, I'm a sax player, but I'm an educator. I'm a, I also mm -hmm. have a podcast and, um, I have to market myself and I have to do like website design and I have like, you mm -hmm. end up having to learn loads of additional skills and you're yeah. no longer this one person. I'm like, actually I'm an accompanist and I can also, you know, you have to have lots of skills in order mm -hmm. to, you know. I think being, being, being self-employed, isn't yeah. it? That, that's, yeah, that's, hugely. that's the thing. Like you are literally everything. Yeah. I am everything. <laughs> Though I do have an accountant now. Yeah, oh, that's all right then. Yeah, yeah, I know. I do my own accounts. Well, I do it, but like, he, just, he just explains things to me <laughs> yeah. like capital allowance. But I think, I I think people with a normal job yeah they would maybe flip between like different jobs and stuff totally. like that and but there are lots of parallel fields they're like well i was working in marketing in this agency so i'm gonna like mm -hmm. do like research or like advertising in like a different kind of market you know so there, there's you can move around with your experience a little bit more easily yeah because i feel like people get like shiny object syndrome don't they these days they think the grass is always green say so oh i'm gonna try that career and then they try it and realize oh it's not as good as they thought it was going to be or weren't earning as much money as they thought it would be yeah. Tr change and then they change and stuff like that and the was... grass is always greener isn't it always especially when everyone is sharing all their work life on yeah. social media that's what i mean yeah it's the highlights real it, that's, uh, i was you just uh, the words out of my mouth and it is you, you know you're not gonna post <laughs> like you miserable here on like a no you're not gonna be like oh my goodness here is the same but like, and, but like everyone does it though i'm guilty of this well. <laughs> too. like nobody sees the fact that i'm like i just had a three-hour drive to <laughs> yeah. wherever i was and it was raining I hit a blooming peasant. No, a peasant. <laughs> not a peasant. A pheasant. <laughs> I hit a peasant. All over here. <laughs> a pheasant. Like on my gig to the, the other night, and like the tr I kind of just spent like hours like sorting out a new bump of my. Oh. <laughs> I did that once actually. I was driving down the motorway. Yeah. And then it, it literally came across the motorway like seventy miles an hour. Got to work when I was at uni. Yeah. And then it had actually cooked on the way there <laughs> in the front grill. And one of the porters, or whatever, I was working at a hotel at the time, I had to pull it out and it was literally... It was... You'd have to pull feathers out of my bumper oh. when I got to the... <laughs> but, 
pheasants. I've just learned. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually a pheasant. It wasn't like a human being. No, humans were harmed in me getting to my gig in Oxford. Um, it just was like, it was like me, I'm a car. I'm, I'm on a de-restricted road. I'm going to win this situation anyway. Mm. But yeah, I think like, like I was saying, like even for me, when I yeah. was at school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. When I was at school, I wanted to be a footballer, like everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and then when I got released or whatever, I was like, oh, I should, I should probably do, <laughs> probably need to decide what I want to do. So how did you decide? Well, the thought process at the time was, um, so I went to a separate year seven to 11 school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sixth form. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't really enjoy my seven to 11 school. Yeah. Um, so I did like, okay, at GCC, and then I went to a different sixth form. And I was like, oh, what should I do? I was good at maths. Oh, I did maths. Yeah. Um, I wanted to do business studies. Yeah. I like the business idea. Um, geography, because I was okay at geography. And then I wanted to do psychology. I think that's mainly because I wanted my mum to help me because she did that at uni. Right. But I was awful Fair. at psychology. So I dropped that. I got like a U after AS level. Mm. And then, so I did like general, general studies, maths, geography, business studies. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I so, can't. I can. But yeah. And then I was going to do business studies at uni. Yeah. Because my dad said, oh, that'll be good. Um, Classic dad line, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, but then so I realised, oh, I'd actually have to get decent uh, A-levels to do it. So my mum used to be a careers advisor when she was younger. <gasps> but I really liked event events, so like festivals, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I want to do events management and put on massive festivals. And then my dad said, oh, you don't want to limit yourself to one thing. Try and do a couple of things. So oh, I worked yeah. at like the local entertainment centre, yeah, yeah, one yeah. of my mate's dad. So my mum said, do hospitality and events management. So that's what I did at university, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Um, I dropped events after the first year. Yeah. It was really boring, even yeah. though that's what I wanted to do because yeah. like all the health and safety and stuff. And then um, <laughs> did hospitality and ended up doing like a placement year there and I absolutely yeah. loved it. And stuff. Oh, yeah, right. It was crazy, yeah. So what, what was like your thought process through school? Because obviously you wanted to do music. Was it I always, be... I want to do music? No, I, uni, or... I wanted to be a newsreader. Hello and welcome to the News at 10. I <laughs> am Leah Nelsax and in... Blah, blah. Um, so yeah, I did my undergraduate music. Yeah. I, I was, again... I, like, I do appreciate that it's quite unusual that I had, like, a super supportive family. I was like, I want to go into the arts. And they were like, okay. Yeah. Uh, which isn't... That's like, important, isn't it? It really, it? like, it really is. And I didn't realise until later that... You don't, do you just take it for granted? I, it I for think granted. I did as well at the time. So I wanted to go into radio, did my undergraduate, um, and then did the master's. And it was about a month before the master's where I was like, um, I think I want to go into music. Like, I can't bear not to be in music because I was still convinced I was going to go into radio. Mm -hmm. Having done no work experience. Well, no, I did. I went to I went to Bible college for a year when I was 18 in America and did radio. Thank you <laughs> yeah, very much. Fun fact. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So the four factors in it. Christian rock. <laughs> <laughs> that niche knowledge. Um, and uh, and I was like, I think I, I think I can't not do music Like because it's so emotionally connected to what I play. And my mum was like, we know. <laughs> but she told me. So, yeah, I started off very... Very slowly, because I like as musicians, I was like a piano player and a conductor and a reader and a sax player. So I didn't know which bit of music I wanted to go into. Um, and so it was doing a bit of teaching and then just contacts, people I'd met at uni, just slowly, 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 slowly flourished um, and was in a place where my parents were like, could live with them. So I was able to like actually have the financial security to explore my career, which again is a very unique position. And I do appreciate that it was a privilege. Um, to pursue that and then I found my niche I was like actually what I'm good at is entertaining people being on stage doing sax playing with bands so I do a lot of like um events corporates functions do them internationally do them like travel the whole country um doing that kind of stuff and what I love and I was also good at it and then as soon as I kind of decided on which part I wanted to do then the door started opening because I was like I don't know if I want to do doubling or theater work and I was like no actually this is my niche. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. And then now I've just, I play the saxophone for a living. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the moment, or like what, when was the moment when like that kind of like. <laughs> I had a very good mate called Phil Short, who's a guitarist. He's about to go on tour with Westlife actually again. Oh, oh, no, niche. Yeah. And I was, we were on the way back from church. I dropped him back home again. I was like, I just, bro, I just don't know what to do. Because at that point I could have become like a keys player or I could become like a conductor or a doubler. And he was like, Leah, find one thing and be really good at it because mm -hmm. he found his like actual niche and I, I almost as soon as that conversation happened prayed about it and was like and then as soon as i'd gone through that take you to the lord and then it was like boom i found that mm -hmm. yes yeah, so it was a late night car conversation with one of my very best mates yeah i think that's really important isn't it it's like say focus on one thing and be yeah. really good at it especially when you're just starting out isn't it don't try and 
do everything yeah. and be a, ge- a generalist because you're not going to get anywhere. Because I think one thing I always say is like, say if you want to get to a hundred, yeah. you're doing five things at once and you've only got 20 and yeah, you're, you're only going to get 20% of the way, aren't yeah. you? I think that's a good way to put it. So if you want to do one thing, get to hundred, put hundred percent energy, you're going to get there quicker than doing five things at once. And also find something that's you. Mm-hmm. So like you're clearly a communicator and you like doing that. So that's, the, and I like, I'm expressive and positive and bubbly and like audiences. So that suited me. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't like, I didn't, I, there were role models around, but I was like, this is who I want to be. I wasn't doing what anybody else, I wasn't conforming to what anybody else wanted me to be as well. How, how do you think you, you realized that then? Do you, just, do you think you're like, was it, do you think you're quite self-aware as a person or? I think I am quite self-aware. I also realized the reasons I was getting callbacks for gigs was mm-hmm. because of the way that I was behaving on gigs as well. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, like being me and like doing a good job, like turning up. Turning up on time is such, you know, being prepared, <laughs> turning up on time, that carries you a very, very long way, treating everybody with respect. And so I think I was just like, oh, look, actually, this is the way I process, this is the way I am, and this is serving me well. I'm going to honor that and kind of keep going with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then what, what was it like starting out in your career, would you say? Bumbling. Mm-hmm. Because you, I wouldn't say that there's like a career ladder. It's not like you have an entry level and then you become <laughs> like an administrative assistant and then you become senior administrator and then you become this. It's not like that. Mm-hmm. So you kind of, when a door's open, at the beginning, especially when I was in my early 20s, you kind of say yes to everything. Mm-hmm. Will you do a pop gig for 20 quid, five hours away? Of course I will. <laughs> I want nothing more than to do that. Um, and then you kind of discern, like, actually, this is value. This is what I'm worth. This is how much I should charge. Um, it's difficult, isn't it, to know how to charge? Yeah. It is, and it's a learned thing, and it's also what I've learned, a respecting your peers thing. So if you're undercharging, you're disrespecting your peers. Mm-hmm. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, you're, you're saying, well, like, you're not value that. You're not worth that. Um, and I think, you know, experience adds value as well. But I also, like, I've had a few people come up to me go, can we just chat through what it's like doing that They're like at the beginning of their career? And I'm like, yes, go out for a coffee. And I'm like, you need to do this, this, and this. And I just realized that, I'd never had that modeled to me. Yeah. Like I realized growing up, like none of my music teachers had ever said to me, you can make a career out of this. Mm-hmm. Not one. Why do you think that is then? I just don't think the mentality of pursuing creativity as a job was valued. Mm-hmm. Like, and so all my, all my kids that I teach, I'm like, well, when you're a musician, I mean, I know they won't be, but I just want to get that fact mm-hmm. that it's a real valid, like worthy, fulfilling career mm. um and so that's why i think it cottoned on to me i need to do it quite late in life um but no i, I love it mm-hmm. and, and how, how do you think we or people in general would be able to change that kind of mentality for people i think respecting creatives mm-hmm. so like i will be playing for two two hours off ste- on stage and they will be like hey! <laughs> and then i'll get off stage and they'll be like so what do you do the rest of the time and i'm like me literally just told just told me how fabulous that was <gasps> and, and so there's not an awareness that this is a value and it's not just a hobby because a lot of people who are like podcasters or um like artists or musicians or spoken word or whatever they it's, for some people it's a hobby but i'm like actually i've been studying music since i was four years old mm-hmm. what tell you therefore how many years i've been doing it <laughs> and it's something i've invested in and worked hard at but people don't see that as a career, they just think, oh, that's, that's a fun hobby. I'm like, no, mate, there's more yeah. than you think there is. What's, what's that phrase? It takes 10 years to become an overnight success. Yeah, right? well, that's exactly it. And it's like, well, you know, it's a classic thing when a parent goes to me, how long until little Bobby gets to grade one? And I'm like, it's entirely how much they practice. Like, there's nothing I can do. They go, yeah. grade 29, woohoo! Nothing I can do. It's the graft, which people never see. Because mm-hmm. I just suddenly pop up and go, saxophone they don't seem like grade five scales and my mom taking me to the exam yeah yeah bless her um <laughs> they just don't, they don't you can't you can't cheat it though can you like no you can't and it's i mean it's hard though because as a creative like your people perceive you as what you do like so there's there's an emotional connection to what your value does you know like my music is so close to who i am so that can be quite hard um but yeah people don't People, it again, goes back to the highlights reel. They just see you on stage and don't realise everything else that's gone behind. Yeah, and practiced. they also don't see all the failures. Mm-hmm. Like the gigs where you're like, I just played terribly. And there are gigs when I'm like, yeah, I didn't do very well at that mm-hmm. because everyone has a bad day at work. Mm-hmm. 
Well, that, that's that's the thing. Like I see the quotes on social media all the time. Like yeah. LeBron James, whatever the basketball yeah. player says, oh, you see, I've won X amount of titles, but you don't see how many match winning free throws I've missed, or yeah. like footballers, how many penalties I've missed, you just see how many titles and stuff like that, and how many games they've lost in their whole career yes. and stuff like that. You only see <laughs> the, the wins, don't you? But it's obviously you need to counteract, and you need to have more wins and losses, and then yeah. kind of thing. And 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 it builds you as a person, doesn't it? Yeah, you're as a right. person. We were talking before me and Yoni about yeah. you need to get used to rejection. Yes. And and pe- people who are scared to try things. And if if you fail to start, you'll you'll never succeed, will you? Because you're too like, oh, I, w- I won't do that because I'll never be there. But you need to start like sm- slow and steady because people want to go zero to a hundred, don't they? But they don't want to put the work in. I think that's back to social media, isn't it? These days. They don't see the graft. And there's a, there's, a, there's a phrase that often bats around the musical world, which is you're only as good as your last gig, which is actually so unhelpful. Because it puts your immediate value into your last success, which is just basis. Yeah. And number one, you are not you not valued on by what you do. That is mm-hmm. not how you are valued as a human being. No. Just back to basics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> caveat. But I can relate to that because when I used to put nightclub events on, yeah. you're only as good as your last event. Yeah. And then as soon as you've done your last event, you're on to the next one. Yeah. And you're you're buzzing, and then, and then you start doubting yourself because I'm like, well, I, the last one was really good. Can I do it that well again? And what if? Blah, 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 blah. And then your mind just goes. Mm. And like no, and it, like my mates are in banking, or if they're in like. Uh, Banking is clearly the only nine to five job that comes to my mind, right? Oh, <laughs> accountancy, <laughs> or like if you're working in a shop, like everyone has bad days at work. Yeah. Everyone has days where they don't want to go to work, mm-hmm. and everyone does days where they just do things wrong. Like we are human; we are just hands down going to do things wrong. I make mistakes every single yeah. day, all the time. <laughs> we don't go around saying, "I made this mistake." Today. I made this thing. You're like, "I made a mistake. Do I need to apologise? Do I need to like do a better job of that?" And then you you learn. Yeah. You learn from your mistakes. We've ended on a fabulous but true cliche. <laughs> yeah, no, you do, don't you? I think it's so important. Yeah. So what would you say you've you've learned then from starting out to kind of progress into maybe the next level? So obviously everyone starts at the yeah, bottom, yeah, don't yeah. they? And then what kind of what was the journey like? So I there? think I've learned like do a good job every single time. Like mm-hmm. if it's a 10 quid gig or if it's a 400, 500 gig, if it's to one person or to 10,000 people, you always do your best because mm-hmm. you want like you've it's that's not what you're about you know, in every circumstance, you're not like, well, they've only paid me 55 P's. I'm like, no, you're doing 55 P's worth of work. Well, that's not how it works. If you've agreed to a job, you do it well. Um, and, uh, if extra work needs to be done, if you need to go the extra mile, Mm -hmm. you do it because like you honor the people you serve, the people you're providing a service to, Mm -hmm. which can be really hard when the people you're working for are are not great people, Yeah. but actually people that people will remember the fact that in a terrible situation, you honored them. Hmm. And they probably know that, you know, if you, you, you would treat them with respect. And that goes so, so far. And like, I've had some grim situations with, like, <laughs> ex-business partners and stuff. And, but nothing was ever said in anger and nothing was ever said um, out of spite. So, like, even though we had disagreements, there was still respect and there was still communication, which mm-hmm. goes along. Yeah, because I think... When when you first start out, like you say, you have to do <laughs> the rubbish gigs. You do, there, you like the bad events or work with the bad clients and stuff to like gain the experience and learn how to deal with people as well. Yes, I think I've said loads of times before, but like people are the most complex things in the world. Like something yeah. could make a hundred percent logistical sense, but then you throw a person involved who doesn't think logically, and then they do the complete opposite thing. And you think. Why have they done that? Why and you know what? That? I'm sure that like I do that to people as well. <laughs> yeah, you know, I will all the time. What has she just, why has Leah just done that? That is clearly unhelpful. <laughs> so I'm aware that while I think that of other people, people must think that of me. <laughs> <laughs> but it is crazy, like the way people work. But um, so yeah, so, so tell us a bit about your journey then from where you first started out to where you are now. Yeah. So started off, I remember my first gig, I think I got paid 50 quid. It's quite good, isn't it? Yeah, that's like, quite good. I don't, I, but I do remember going, Oh my goodness! Somebody's paid me to play the saxophone. Mm. Do they know that I am not that good? <laughs> did you Did you do many free gigs out of interest to start off with? Or was it just straight mm, with fifty? Not. I think they were. Mm, oh, it was a long time ago, and I can't quite remember. <laughs> there were there were least expenses. Yeah. Um, and That's also cool. also doing free gigs is not a bad thing as long as it's your decision. Yeah. So do you know what I mean? If like I like, there were some gigs that I do in some in some bars and clubs, which are terrible money because they're like a bar in Soho. They're not going to pay you the big bucks. Mm-hmm. I love doing. They're so much fun. Like if you're mm-hmm. in the middle of Soho and it's a blues bar and it's one a.m. and you're with a load of, it's great. Like that's my choice. So there's, that's a separate thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and it just kept kept grafting. And then you know, um, people I met, 
And it's very networking, my world. So like you meet one person in yeah. a gig and if you get on with them and they've got a vibe and they do a solid job, that opens mm -hmm. the doors. So it's like continue, like do a good job, respect everyone you meet. Mm -hmm. um, and so now like I work doing um, mostly private events. So private events, corporates in the UK, internationally, um, you know, whether that is a wedding or a rap party or a hen rap, as in like a TV rap, not like, well, they can, people can rap. <laughs> there was a rapper at a gig a few weeks ago. Um, or whether that's, uh, you know, in the UK, um, I travel the whole country or like clubs at 3am or, so that's what I do. A bit of session, a bit of artist work. I'm not a massively touring musician. That's just not kind of my jam. That's not, I don't think my character really suits that particularly well. Mm. Um, yeah. So that's just, just, keep, it's just keeping going and grafting and doing a good job. Um, yeah. What, what, what was like the thought process then when you were <laughs> was just starting out? Because I know you, you said about like there's no real natural progression. <laughs> no. But so when you were starting out, was it like, I want to go and perform in this place and this place? And then I want to no. teach and I want to be in no, education. Because that, that. But that's not because of my industry. That's because of the way my brain processes. Okay. So do you know some people are like, what's your five-year goal? Do you have a five-year goal? Not really. Yeah. But some people are like, well, I would have wanted to get this salary and be living in this. That's, I just do not process that way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think my goal is I just, I will, there were, oh, so I start that sentence again, <laughs> all the words simultaneously. Um, I just want to be working with good musicians and frequently if you work with good musicians, you end up in better places, like better venues, better bands. Um, and so that was my progression is just like, just, and go, let the doors open and I walk through them. Mm -hmm. I think I'm a Christian. I believe that was God at work. God's like, and I, like, as a self-employed person, especially, I'm like, so thankful for work. Thank you. Yeah. Um, because I, I feel like I didn't do anything. I just worked hard mm. and somebody gave me an opportunity and I decide whether to take it. Um, and what was you were saying? Like the more you do it, there's more wisdom and more discernment. And you're like, actually, I'm not going to travel to that place for that money, mm -hmm. but I will do that. But it can be vice versa because I'm with those people. I will take yeah. that lower gig because I know it will serve me better in the future. And that can be seen as financially ruthless, or it can just be seen as being like business minded. And although I'm a creative, I am a business. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. Hey, we're just filming up, just finishing a podcast. How long have we got? Or is it time up? Is it only 30? Oh, are we able to have 10, 15 minutes? I, yeah. Yeah, I can see you need more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we won't be long. Sorry. Yeah, we ran out of time. As I said, something always goes wrong on the podcast. <laughs> That's fine. We'll sort that out. <laughs> what have we seen? Uh, network, discernment, network. networking. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's important, isn't it? Like you're saying, when you grow up and you get more experience, don't yeah. you? Like you say, if you maybe want to, if you're thinking all oh, about money, like, oh, I'm only going to go if I get paid X amount, then that might say impact you and your business. If say you say, oh, well, they're offering me a bit less, but I'm surrounded by the better people. And then. That's the it. net your network is your net worth if that makes sense yeah um and it's not yeah. say that again <laughs> your network is your net worth i've got Bing. new teeth so i'm trying to learn how to which speak. can i say are fabulous thanks yeah yeah can you see them? have a few pictures before um and it's also it's not what you know it's who you know all the always yeah which um, you need to be you need to know something you to start with. i know but, but I, I can i remember starting out well how do i find these people because you're like networking, you're like, well, how do you go around networking? And, and therefore you've just at some point got to put yourself out there. Yeah, it's important. Which is hard. Yeah, a lot of people like struggle. Even yeah. like business owners that we deal with that are really successful. Yeah. They don't really want to put themselves out there. But it's like, if you do a little bit more, then you get such a big, uh, it makes such a big difference. So, uh, yeah, would you, would you say you've always found it easy to put yourself out there or? No. No? Like I'm not one of these musicians who's like, go to a jam night. I'm like, no, that sounds terrifying why would i want to ex like musically expose myself in a terrifying situation i do find it easy to speak to people so once i'm in a space having a chat mm -hmm. that i'm great with because i feel like that's genuine honest communication like i get to actually know you mm -hmm. um but also although i'm like <laughs> i'm actually a big introvert so yeah i think i'm similar to that so there's a sense where i'm like red lipstick on be stage leader and that phrase like i'm some frequently more confident on a stage than off a stage mm -hmm. um so i just have to sometimes go i've got it my sister or my mum will be like yes leah you can do this I'm like okay um and you just have to just 
And there will be awkward moments and there will be grim moments. And that's just life. Yeah. Because I think I've been thinking about this more lately that I do enjoy one on one conversations and maybe yeah. small groups of people and talking to them. But when I'm in, in a bigger group, especially because I stopped drinking like 20 months ago, I was saying to you, and I don't enjoy going out to like nightclubs or maybe bars as late because they always get more rowdy and it's been on their level and stuff. Whereas I just prefer to meet one of my mates, have a crack with them, talk to them. I'll have like a one-on-one yeah, 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 podcast, yeah. but I do really enjoy my own company. Like at, 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 at the end of a, like when I, like Monday to Friday, I don't do anything apart from watch football in the evening. I'll switch my laptop off, watch the football, go to bed. And at the weekends, yeah. at the weekends, I'll be happy to just sit and do absolutely nothing, watch football Mate, all and weekend. So, and because my work is super social, because I'm literally bossy. Yeah. I'm like, I, I sometimes forget to see my mates because my, my social brain has been fixed. I'm like, no, Leah, you actually need to see your friends. That's also good as well. But I was so content. I had, I had an asymptomatic COVID in January. Oh. I had a week by myself. I was so happy. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, bye, everybody. But I, th I think I think a lot of people like that, though, aren't they? When their jobs are social and yeah. out there and not like putting on an act, but just being a bit over exuberant or adding 20% to your personality. You just kind of just want to just chill out, relax yeah. and just do your own thing and stuff. But yeah. Um, yeah. And then say, so should we talk about more like what you've been up to lately then or what you've got planned in the near future? With lately. Stuff? So... After the world turned inside out, obviously yeah. because it didn't work. Well, I taught. Yeah. How, 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 how did, I literally how, what, taught every what, human in North London the instrument. During well, COVID. I literally lost all my work overnight. I, I think I worked out, but overnight, 10 grand of work I lost. I mean, oh, overnight. How, and how, that was not even, because a lot of my work is last minute, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I was doing teaching um, and I was eligible for the government grants, thank the Lord. Oh, and sorry. then every all, all the events caught up. Like, so as of May um, 2021, I've been gigging like i've never gigged before mm -hmm. like and, and it's kept going actually and so i've got some gigs you know i got multiple gigs a day month and a week um and just doing everywhere and everywhere whether it's like um playing in marseille for like less than 24 hours at the end of may or like doing a club night was like, you know with yoni like um last month like you know whatever doing that and then um uh, I got a rap party on Saturday for a mm -hmm. TV show I'm not allowed to mention. Yeah. Uh, and so it's just mm. lots and lots of different projects across the whole country. How, how did you find it during COVID then? Because there was a weird psychological element in that because none of the other cr people were creating, there was a calm. Mm -hmm. Because you constantly subconsciously compare to other people. Well, they're gigging, they're producing, they're doing this. So there was a numbness in that creatively I wasn't really expressing as much. There was the first time ever I started writing music actually was in lockdown. But the, the comparison stopped. So I was, it was a reflection on my own heart of like, even though I thought like that I wasn't comparing to myself on socials, like clearly still was. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was teaching loads. So it was quiet and I was teaching and still doing music. And I think emotionally numb creatively because I wasn't playing it. But there was a sense of calm because there was like, it was literally illegal for me to play the saxophone. I remember in August um 2021 it was like 21 or whatever year it was 2020 they were like if you're a professional player you are now allowed to play a wind instrument outdoors that was how specific the government no, guideline really. was so i, I like, didn't even know yeah i mean like, well, i was following it like a hawk because yeah. wind instruments especially they were like you're spitting into each other's faces um i do appreciate that um but uh yeah so it was a bit numb but also nobody was working so there's nothing to do Mm -hmm. And then I started writing and doing some piano writing stuff as well. And what did it feel like when obviously the restrictions got lifted? Amazing. Amazing. And like, just like putting on the most comfortable pair of shoes again. Mm -hmm. And like with people and, and just, I think I realised that I hadn't been, I only realised when I was playing that I'd actually been quite low. Yeah. Because actually I'm so emotionally connected to how I create. And I was like, oh, what I love to do. Mm -hmm. And it was a joy to be playing with other people. Yeah. And back in. Oh, back in it. The atmosphere, the vibe, yeah, yeah, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then, so you said you've been playing since you were four years old. Yeah. And what keeps you going? I love it. 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 Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. So I know we're very time restricted. Yeah. So we have to go on to everyone's favorite part, which is relationship advice. This is going to be so good because I'm like proper Christian. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I love part. the Lord. <laughs> I put the Lord first, so you're going to get some niche. So this is going to be probably the most interesting relationship <laughs> advice we've ever had and probably ever will have. <laughs> so, right, the way we work it is anonymously name them. I'll read it out and then we 
you give advice, we can give a bit of advice together. Great. Okay, thanks. So the first one is going to be a girl, what we call her. Um, Felicity. Right, Felicity, Felicity is messaged in. Felicity, why are you messaging me asking for relationship advice? Why are you messaging us asking for relationship advice? From me. So apparently uh, the boy she's talking to is seeing other people. Um, they've hinted at a busy date in life and they're not ready to settle down and they want to keep their options open. Um, Felicity doesn't know for sure what they are because they haven't talked about being exclusive. What does she do? Are they messaging or are they actually going out? Well, she hasn't actually said that. That sounds but... like they're just messaging. That sounds like there's nothing real going on. It sounds like he's obviously He sounds like a player. Coming in the field. <laughs> and she, she quite likes I know, him. I know, but like, I think she needs to value herself more and go like... I reckon? I, yeah, I do. And I think... It's like it messes with your brain when you're like committing to loads of different people in like superficial ways simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and yes, there's a short term like woohoo, but long term it's ow. Yeah. So you, you think? I mean, do you think Felicity should just pay him off then? I think so, which is really hard to do. Yeah. Because your heart. She gets sounds like she's attached. As well. I know, but like objectively, if she, this is a thing, if she was talking to her own mate about her own situation, mm -hmm. she'd be like, "Listen, you're a great human being." Mm. Like you deserve someone who is willing to give you one to one attention. Yeah, I think it's difficult, isn't it? Because obviously you got to learn the lesson that boys more often than not are players, aren't they? When they make it right. No, it doesn't make it right at all. <laughs> I think it's difficult because obviously he's probably leading her on as well, isn't he? I think so. And but this is also the danger of like actually not meeting up in person and like just ha having a, a conversation that's online or on text or on whatever app you're on. That's also not reality. It's the same thing like we're having an actual conversation, like actually get to know you and see you and see what you're like. Yeah. Um, I think as well, maybe if he's saying like, oh, um, I don't want anything serious, blah, 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 maybe over text. But then when they're together, they're acting maybe like they're a bit yeah. like relationship. So but also she goes. clearly wants one thing. She clearly wants yeah. to be like one to one. Would, would Which think, he's clearly not. I think she should just confront him and say, "This is how I feel. This is what I want." Yeah, I'll definitely. Leave it. Definitely. Felicity. Hands down. Felicity. <laughs> yeah, do it. The Christian said. <laughs> <laughs> right. Next one is a boy. What we call him? Um. Uh. James. James. Right. James. <laughs> James feels confused. There's a lack of clear direction with the girl he's talking to, and he feels stressed. He's definitely caught feelings for this girl. Oh, I love that what does he do? Um. Just be direct. Direct. Yeah. Do you reckon he just what and, and says what? Well, if he's confused and he doesn't know what's going on, like have a conversation. Mm. Because like, if the at least with the, once you've had a conversation, you know, which again is uncomfortable and weird. But at least yeah. once you've got to have a conversation, you both know where you're standing. Because because he's currently guessing her feelings and therefore guessing his own feelings as well. Yeah. Because do you think maybe he doesn't want to speak to her because he's scared that she of might course. say, "Oh, I don't want to commit them." That of kind course. Of thing. But like, wouldn't you rather know? No. Yeah. yeah it's, as opposed it's, to like the constant limbo, and then you can move on. It's always the worst not knowing, isn't it? It's never yeah. as bad as you think. Yeah, and you're always making own games in your own mind. And that's, mm. not, that's not reality. How, how do you think he goes about it, though? Do you reckon he, like, texts in, or oh, can we meet up, I need to chat to you? Or, he just, or next thing he meets up, or just doesn't mention it, but then next time he meets up. Well, clearly if they're messaging, I say, let's have a chat. And also, that because, I, I mean... Then, it's... then she might be like... <laughs> that's okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> so he texts to say, I need to meet... James says, I, need, I want to meet James. up and have a chat. No, oh yeah, so I just want to have a chat. Is that all right? Can we? Well, I think also like if you're intentional about it, because he's he's yeah, confused. Like um, that conversation will happen. Because mm. if you just wait for the next time, like will you actually have the confidence next time you're with them to be like, actually, I'd like to clarify the situation. But if you're like, we're here to, and it will be awkward. That's okay. Yeah. You will survive. Mm -hmm. You will not like nobody's ever. If somebody says I really like you, mate, nobody's gonna go. Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah, Everyone's yeah, always a bit chuffed. Do you know what I mean? Uh, oh yeah. Big so it's three, never. Like... There's he can't. In that sense, like he's not gonna lose because like nobody's gonna be like. Mm. Just... He might live happily ever after. Yeah, it, well, exactly. And then you're and he's clearly already thinking worst case scenario, right? Whereas actually, she, lady, whatever her name is, <laughs> which we don't know. <laughs> no, if you got names, it's straight, straight. So right, yeah. Message her, me over, ask her, and then live happily ever after. Right, last one, last okay. one. It's a girl. What are we call her? Um, uh, oh, no, I was going to give her my mum's name, but no, that's a really bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> my mum's got a beautiful Mom's name. <laughs> no, no, my mum's not. Um, uh, Sienna. Sienna. Yeah, thanks. Uh, right, yeah. first Sienna we've ever had. So Sienna says, uh, they always make a joke about things when I'm trying to be serious with them. It's really annoying me. How do I go about sorting this out? We know what I'm going to say, right? <laughs> I don't know. Chat to them about it. <laughs> This goes back to communication. This goes back to communication and being honest. Because, like, if you're getting seriously annoyed at somebody yeah. every time, like, that's no way to be. 
Yeah. Would that annoy you though? If so, if you try to be serious, say with me, and I was just taking a joke out of it all the time. Uh, darling, it's all about context. <laughs> Do you know well, what I mean? It's really annoying her. She's but I think it's really, and it sounds like she's, she wants to have some serious chats, and it, mm. she probably feels like she's not been taken seriously. He she's like, like feel awkward about it though. But maybe then, sort it out, mate. If you're feeling awkward about it, yeah. And like, do you want to be with someone who doesn't listen to you? No, you don't. And doesn't do. show you the respect because that sounds like disrespectful. And like, you sound like they're in a relationship as well. Yeah, that's what I mean. But if he's not taking what she values seriously, mm. is he valuing her? Boom. Uh, clearly not. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> right, and that's the last question. <laughs> right, Leah, do you wanna end plug in anything you want? Social media. Um, I, any I, I'm on Leah Sax everywhere. Leah Sax, L E A H Sax. I play the saxophone. If you need a sax player, call me. I'm available. Mm. I travel. Yeah. Um, I potentially might have a gig for you, gig for you as well. Ooh, One of our clients, sweet. yeah, potentially. Yeah, great. Uh, right, everyone, thank you very much for watching Yay. and listening. If you're watching on YouTube, please cl click subscribe. Comment your favourite part of the podcast. Oh. That'd be great. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, go and leave me a review. If I yes. review, please. That would be super, super helpful. And yeah, I will see you next time. Bye, 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 bye. bye.